Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Christopher Gennari, and this is Great Big History Podcast. In our History 102 episode, we're going to do Americana and the World, Disneyland's in Asia. So we start talking about Tokyo Disneyland. And what we want to talk about is if Disneyland and Disney World and Epcot tell us about America, tell us about American culture, tell us about what America is, what it wants to be, how it thinks of itself. Whether it's optimistic or nostalgic or in need of safety. If it's the most typical or expressive of American brands, then what does it mean when it's in Asia? What does it mean when it's in a completely different culture? A non-American culture with a non-American context. So we start with Do- Tokyo Disneyland. So why would a Disneyland end up in Tokyo? Well, Disney animation and live action movies and their shorts were big in Japan. It gave rise to anime, which is a Japanese animation method, uh, style, uh, that come especially from Japanese stories and originals, which itself comes out of the manga tradition of the art book. Walt's death in 1966, plus the building of Disney World and the Magic Kingdom, plus the 70s being so terrible for Disney live action movies especially, Disney needed money. This is a bad time for Disney. You know, we think of Disney as one of the big, massive companies of the world. Well, in 1972, it wasn't. It was a bad movie studio, a nostalgic animation studio. It had a cute couple of characters and it had the theme parks and the nostalgic theme parks. And that's it. It wasn't that big of a deal. This is the time when Disney Disney could have been taken over by a bigger company. It needed money. And it needs money just as the Oriental Land Company approaches with the desire to build a Disneyland in Japan. So what is the result? The result is that Disney licenses its IP, its intellectual property, and the Oriental Land Company builds an exact replica of Walt Disney World. It's a win-win. It's the same Cinderella Castle. It's the same Haunted Mansion, despite Japanese culture not having ghosts. Buddhism does not have ghosts. It does not have a scary afterlife. No, your ancestors, the spirits of your ancestors are there to help you, not to scare you. They have an old West, an American old West. Japan doesn't have an old West. The West to Japan is China, is Korea, is Central Asia. That's Japan's West. They have the same Space Mountain. Disney makes money, but it doesn't have to spend any on construction or researching new stuff. And for Japan, it was a way for Japan to bring America to the Japanese. To build an exact replica rather than changing it. It's a way to bring America to Japanese people. Why? Well, in 1980, The Japanese are doing well. Japan is doing very well. The economy is good. It's going to be so good in the 1980s that when I was a kid, I remember that it was Japan Inc. Japan was going to take over everything. Japan was buying up America. It bought Rockefeller Center, you know, that kind of thing. The way people are worried about China today. The Japanese also had the idea that America, despite having bombed it to the Stone Age, in the 1940s, was awesome. But it's far away. 
It's strange. It's very big. And it's not very Japanese friendly. It's very Anglo European. Which is true. Which is true. We, America, because it's based in the East for the most part, looks East, looks towards Europe because of culture, but that's travel. I imagine many of you, when, if you take, if you took a international trip or you are looking to take an international trip, you're looking at Europe before you're looking at Asia. But to the Japanese, the reconstruction after 1945 culturally is a success. Economically, it's a success. And America is the big cultural friend. It's awesome, but it's far away and it's strange. And it's very, very big. So Disneyland is a safe space to dip into American culture. It's Epcot for Americans for Europe. But it's an entire Disneyland. It's entire Walt Disney World, really for Japanese without being swallowed by it. It's a safe space for indulgence. It works the same way Epcot World Showcase does for Americans. It's a safe space to experience. All of the people who are there, you get the American culture, you get the hot dog, you get the ice cream, right? But everybody's friendly. Most of the workers are Japanese, right? If there are Americans, they're friendly to you, right? And they can speak Japanese as well, or some Japanese. So it's a safe space for you to dip your toes. And it becomes massively popular. It's so popular, it needed a second gate. It needed another Disneyland of some sort because it couldn't hold the Disneyland. Tokyo couldn't hold all the people who wanted to go on a given day. So you needed another gate. It also became the model for Disneyland expansions in Europe, Euro Disneyland, which fails. Europe, Euro Disneyland is, is not an exact replica the way Tokyo Disneyland is, but it's really Disneyland California. I've been to Euro Disneyland or Disneyland Paris, it's now called, uh, a dozen times. And, I, and part of it is I go for the nostalgia of seeing a Disneyland that hasn't changed. It still has the, the, the stuff on Main Street that Walt Disney World doesn't have. That has, they've, they gave up in the 90s. They gave up in the early 2000s. They moved on. It has stores. It has businesses. It has, it has all those little speakers so that when you walk by the music shop, there's music coming out. They don't do that at Disney World anymore. You can listen to a telephone call as a party line, you know, it's like going to Disneyland, but like in 1985, it's like, it's like going to a museum in a lot of ways. I can't, ex I can't explain it better than that. And so every time I've been to France, every time I've been, you know, you always start in Paris, but every time I've been to France, we always make a, a day or two trip to go to Disneyland, Paris. But it's a failure. Disneyland Paris is a failure. Most of it, despite being in France, most of the people who go are Brits. Or the British. But there will be Disneylands in Hong Kong and Shanghai, which we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the, the European Disneyland. We could. And we could talk about it right now. We could talk about it in two minutes. right? Why does it fail? Because Europe doesn't want to be, to, and especially France, doesn't want the American culture. It doesn't view American culture as advanced. It views Disney as kiddie, as for children, as sophomoric, as vulgar, you know, uh, all right, it's a theme park, all right, where you pretend to be Peter Pan, oh, come on. The weather's not very great if you've ever been to paris in january you know it's cold and rainy foggy 
I have pictures where you cannot see the castle. I'm at, I'm at one end of the middle of Main Street, and you cannot see. It's all fog. You cannot see the castle. Um, it has terrible food, which is amazing because you're in France. But their food is just terrible. I, I, every time I go, I'm like, it will be better, and it's never better. And I can't figure that out. But their take on American food is that it's awful. Um, it's just, it's a copy, but it's a copy without love. Do you know what I mean? It's not a cover. It's a copy. And it's, it's, it lacks, well, it has all the parts. It lacks that special sauce that makes it, that makes the Disneyland's in America's so lovable. And yet it's big, and yet it is, it is, it's a failure, it's finally made money, but, um, but it's, it's, it's unlike Japan, which wanted American culture, the French didn't. Maybe if it was in somewhere else, maybe if it was in Spain, or Britain, or Ireland, maybe it might have been better, but in France... You know, there's there's different business practices, there's different cultural practices, there's just, uh, and so it's like, uh, shrug, Disneyland. It's what kids, you take your kids to. But Hong Kong and Shanghai are serious, and Tokyo Disneyland is going to be the, the apex of Disneyland's outside of America. Now, what's interesting is Tokyo gets snow. It is not California. It is not Florida. It has bad weather. And so most of Disneyland is outside because it's built in California. It's built in Florida. And so what we have is not a Main Street USA. You have what you have a world bazaar. And it starts with the covered roof. It's the Main Street with the covered roof. So, Main Street USA is the nostalgia for a U.S. small town. Well, that doesn't fly in Japan. They don't know what a small town looks like, American small town looks like. And so what the World Bazaar does is make a, make this glass roof that is inspired by the Crystal Palace World Fair of 1851. We've talked about that. Disney wanted a World's Fair, but the Oriental Land Company wanted Disneyland. So what you have is these parts of Main Street, USA, but adapted for the weather with that roof. So just like the World's Fair had different booths to represent different countries, so you had the American booth, and you had the British booth, and you had the French booth, and you had, and they would show off the things about that country within those booths, and it was all under this giant glass dome. That's what Main Street, USA is. It's, a, it's, it's the World Fair. But if everything was 1870s, 1890s, America. And so it's a way for Japan, Japanese people to enter into Americana. It is Walt Disney World in Japan. Not, and this is important, not a Japanese version of Disneyland. They're not adapting it for Japanese culture, for Japanese consumers. It is American in Japan. On the other hand, there's Disney Sea, which opens up in the 1990s. The failure of California land at Disneyland in Los Angeles, in Anaheim, excuse me. Part of that reason was because American parks were stuck with booming nostalgia. They couldn't change. They couldn't innovate. See the new rides, Star Wars. Or the Marvel rides that are coming. The comic books in the 60s. I mean, Star Wars is from 1977, right? Disney spent billions of dollars to get Star Wars, which started in 1977. Right? It's boomer Xer nostalgia. The Marvel comic books are from the 60s. Boomer nostalgia. So Americans, American parks are stuck with this nostalgia 
of the way things used to be, of the way Disneyland used to be. And so what Japan is able to do is go to Disney Imagineering and say, what do you got? What can't you use in America? We'll take it. And so Japan is able to out Disney Disney because it's not tied to boom and nostalgia. It's not tied to people wanting to take their kids to see the same rides. And so the newest rides and the newest shows start in Asia. And that starts with Disney Sea, which is all of these ports around water. You would think that would work in California. No, they don't build it in California. The original idea was it would be in Long Beach. But, and Disney Sea is probably the coolest of all the Disneylands out there. But the idea is, what does Disney do now? It starts new rides. The most, the biggest one now is Tron. Tr there's a Tron roller coaster that was built in Shanghai first. Very popular in Shanghai. And now they're going to build it in the Magic Kingdom right next to Space Mountain. Now, to me, that's insane. Why? Because... I saw Tron when it came out. I was in the second grade in the 1980s. It's fine. It's about computers. I understood it. My mom walked out of it going, you understood that? I'm like, yeah, I understood it. My mom's like, you're a strange kid. And here we are today. But how many people want a Tron ride? How many people were like, oh. I want to be on a light cycle the way they were in Tron in 1982. I mean, how many? That you're going to build this massive structure next to Space Mountain. I don't know. I mean, I'll ride it. It's going to be a roller coaster. But to me, the obvious roller coaster to build is the Monsters, Inc. door roller coaster. At the end of Monsters, Inc., there's, you know, there's all the doors. Like, that's the obvious roller coaster ride to build but the tron roller coaster was very popular in asia in shanghai and so they're bringing it to america shows start in asia musical shows especially start in asia or parades start in asia and then they bring them to the united states just like video games anime Apple's designed in California. All right, Apple makes the iPhone. It's designed in California. But then it goes to Asia to be con constructed, to be made, to be finalized. And then it's brought back to America to be used. So just like other cultural imports, Disney's doing the same thing. Just like anime, just like video games, like Nintendo, like Mario. Mario is an Italian plumber of a Japanese company. Think about that. That then imported it to Americans. So what about the Chinese uh, ones, the Hong Kong and the Shanghai ones? Well, they're different. Right? If Disneyland Tokyo is an exact replica of Walt Disney World, that's not true in Shanghai and Hong Kong. There's a Mystic Manor. It's not called the Haunted Mansion. It's Mystic Manor. But there are no ghosts. The castles are different. They're colored different. They're painted different. They're built differently. Pirates of the Caribbean is all projection. It's all video. Whereas the one in Disneyland and, Di and Walt Disney World are mostly the puppet animatronics still moving around. So China has two Disneylands, Hong Kong and Shanghai, which tells you about it's a success. American culture is a success in China, right? China has as many Disneylands as America does. So there's a love of American culture. They have the Main Street. They have the castles. But they combine it with the technological innovation. Pirates in Shanghai is all projection. Versus the Pirates of the Caribbean in the U.S., which its biggest change was to add a Jack Sparrow animatronic puppet in 2006. That's 14 years ago. 
right? I will soon have students in my class who were born after Jack Sparrow was added to Pirates of the Caribbean. They won't know a Pirates of the Caribbean without, you might not know a Pirates of the Caribbean without Jack Sparrow. And so, why? Why is Disney in China? Why is Disneyland built in China and Hong Kong? Mainland China and Hong Kong. Well, because the Disney, the Chinese middle class is growing. It has been growing since the 1990s. China's economy has been growing at 10% a year. We, it's become the second largest economy in the, in the world. And the effect of that is that there's a, there's a growing middle class. And that middle class, like every middle class, wants entertainment and leisure. They have weekends off. So Chinese companies turned out not to be able to provide that. It turned out not to be able to provide the entertainment or the leisure at the level that Chinese consumers wanted. And so since there's money to be made, Disney plus Chinese companies made deals. The Chinese government brought them in. See Chinese foreign tourism, right? There's money to be made. The Chinese tourists are the second largest group and there are estimates now with COVID that you might be the largest group of tourists in the world. They are, they are almost as big, if not bigger, than Americans. Americans might spend more money if more um, Chinese folk travel the world. You know, these, these numbers are not the easiest to come by because there's so many different people, places that you have to bring them together. But Chinese tourism is huge, huge. It's in fact, one of the reasons why Europe has a tourist problem. They have internal tourism, they have American tourism, and then now they have Chinese and Indian tourism. And so you get nice places that are overwhelmed. I remember going to the Louvre and walking in, walking in. It wasn't even a problem. Never sat, never on a line. Never on a line. I have pictures of the Mona Lisa where I am five feet away from it. Never uh, on a line. It wasn't empty, but it but it wasn't flooded either with people. And the last couple times I've gone, two hour wait to get into the Louvre, an hour wait to see the Mona Lisa. You know, the Sistine Chapel is a, a, a cattle call. It's just a big line from the entrance of the Vatican Museum, which itself has a three-hour long line, all the way straight to the Sistine Chapel and then out. Now, that's not just Chinese tourists. That's American tourists as well. That's European tourists. That's Indian tourists. But the biggest increase has been in Chinese tourism. So if there's money to be made, And so Disney capitalism compromises with the limitations of the Chinese Communist Party. Go to Disney World and you'll hear a lot of talk about freedom and human rights and capitalism and democracy. A lot of it all over. Mr. Lincoln, right, talks about democracy, right, and freedom. You go to the American uh, adventure movie and presentation and it's you know, we fought for freedom, 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 freedom. Well, you can't do that. You can't talk about human rights. You can't talk about the yearning to be free in China. The, com- the Communist Party doesn't want that. The Communist Party wants to be in charge. So you can't have all these things about democracies. So Disney changes to the culture of the rides, unlike Japan in order to make the rides more appropriate for Chinese mainland culture. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, let's look at the summary. From 1950 to 1990, Disneyland reflected the hope, promise, power, and fun of America. It became the middle-class achievement to go to it. And it was a rite of passage for American, especially white kids. 
From 1990 to the present, Disneyland's have been taken over by boomer nostalgia in America. So you have little or very slow changes compared to changes of Disneyland since 1995 to Disneyland while Walt was alive, 1955 to 1965. You see massive changes in the first 10 years in Disneyland. Whole rides are gotten rid of, whole new experiences are brought in, whole new innovations. Since 1995 or 2005, a lot less changes. Success for Disney meant more international presence. The sale of U.S. culture to the world, plus the selling of, quote, Disney, the brand, as a wholesome Americana. You could get married by Disney, by Mickey. You have bedtime stories told by princesses. It's wholesome. The Disneylands in Asia began as selling America in Asia. But after 1995, more innovative, more of innovation than the American parks. And Asian parks start exporting rides and shows back to America. And the Chinese parks reflect Asian values to an Asian audience. So this all comes to mean that Disneyland symbolizes that changing relationship of America with the world from 1945 to 2025. In 1945, America was young, innovative, wealthy, educated, creative, and ahead of everyone. By 2025, the USA is still important, but we've slowed down. We've gotten older. A lot of people are stuck in the past and don't want to change. Meanwhile, East Asia has become the innovative hub of the world. And we see that in all of these economics. But we also see it in Disneyland. Thank you.